No, Jimmy, I'm not out of ideas. I'm just really horrible at planning when to do lore videos. Please don't crush me under the giant foot of internet hate. Speaking of giants, Attack on Titan. The concept of Attack on Titan has always fascinated me. Not particularly everything about the manga and anime, but the world that the story is set in. Questions like, why is all of humanity inside this incredibly large city? The walls that block everyone in and everything out. Why is technology so backwards? What led to this? How did we get to a society that had to be protected by three walls? Now, I'm not a huge fan of long stretches of inner dialogue, but the setting itself is what keeps my attention. Imagining how humanity can, for lack of better words, live their entire lives in just fear of being consumed by giant humanoid things. This video is really for people who are interested in the concept itself, the world building, but don't really want to invest so much of the time into the anime, because it gets complex. Very unnecessarily complex. That said, there will of course be spoilers, because some things discussed in this may be important revelations from the manga that might come up later. So first, the world itself. The known world of Attack on Titan doesn't resemble our own in any way. The main story is set in the tiny island called Paradise, next to a much larger continent nobody knows the name of. Wait, wait a second. What's that down there? If we just take the map and turn it upright, then... Oh. It's Earth. The large landmass where our story begins 2,000 years ago, before, you know, this happened, is actually Africa, and so that would mean Attack on Titan is in part alternate history fiction. Huh. And that the city is actually on Madagascar. Huh. We don't know how this came to be or where in the actual history of Earth this takes place, but our story begins in Africa, where there is a conflict between two different ethnic groups, Eldians and Marlians. Now, both groups aren't in any way descendants of actual Africans, and that's not in any way ominous. The Marlians in ancient times ruled the entire known world in a vast empire, from Europe to the Americas down to Africa. That power wouldn't last, however, a shift because of one single royal family, the Fritz dynasty. A woman from the royal family, Ymir as the legend goes, gained an extraordinary power. She made a deal with the devil or source of organic life, it's the devil, look at him. And in return for something, she gained incredible godlike abilities. This was the very first Titan Shifter, a human with the ability to become a Titan. She not only had immense size and incredible powers, but she could turn other people unwillingly into mindless smaller Titans, an army of giant idiots constantly in pain. Because of her power, Ymir and the Fritz family harnessed this ability to wage war against the dominant Marley Empire. The Marleans became subjects, while the Fritz ethnic group, the Eldians, created their own nation, an empire spanning much of the world as well. Ymir died 13 years later after gaining her abilities, and her soul slash powers were split between nine different people. This was to be called the Power of the Titans. It was unique because the nine people now had the ability to turn into a Titan at will, but also harnessed unique abilities for themselves alone, all while being conscious in such a form, something the mindless drones don't have the liberty of. Conveniently, the feudal society of Eldia was ruled over by family houses. Like Game of Thrones, you ask? Yes, Jimmy just like your Game of Thrones. But instead of dragons, wolves, wealth, or pointlessness, each house has a member who could transform into a titan, and this often meant disagreements turned into titans duking it out with enemy houses. This by all accounts has proved well for stability. That was a joke. As the smaller houses squabbled, the Fritz royal family, rulers of the Eldia Empire, maintained order over Africa, Europe, the Middle East, and South America for two whole millennia. The Fritz always maintaining absolute control, because only somebody of the Fritz bloodline could possess the main ability to turn into the Founding Titan. The Founding Titan was the WMD of this world. It had the ability to really do anything, and wipe out anyone. 
So the Fritz and Eldians in return always stayed in power. That surely meant everyone was happy with this forever. Just kidding, the Eldians were pretty much Nazis, really into eugenics and the superiority of their people, Genocides and systematic oppression of inferior ethnicities was all the rage at this time, which might explain why there are no Africans. Ooh. Eldians were the only ethnicity which could possess the power to turn into a titan, and when a group can basically turn into gods, who could do anything? So Marlians and other groups came to understandably hate the Eldians. All this went fine and dandy until a hundred years ago in the main story. The 145th king of the Fritz dynasty, grew tired of the Game of Thrones fighting between the lower houses. He pretty much decided, we need to move the capital to that nice island out to the east, called Paradise, or as we know it, Madagascar. Removing the founding titan, that thing that maintains stability by fear for millennia, off of the continent and onto an island. The main power of the empire just left. So. The Eldians had their political head chopped off, and so what would any of the very oppressed, genocided Marlians do while their enemy was in complete turmoil? Race war, of course, and race war they did. The Marli rebelled against their rulers, beginning the Great Titan War, a civil war which crumbled the rule of the giant empire the Eldians had for centuries. Long story short, the Marlians captured seven of the nine strongest Titans and used them against Eldia. This is where the lore gets really dark. Where do the lumbering, stupid titans come into this? We have smart titans, but what about the freakish monstrosities that consume people? Where do they come from? Marley. Remember how I said only Eldians could turn into titans? Well, the Marley used this to their advantage, kidnapping Eldians, injecting them with titan spinal fluid, and then watching as they mutated into not smart titans, but lumbering, horrific eating machines. Yes, that's right, most titans are not natural. They were once innocent people, or criminals, turned medical experiments. These titans were then sent out against the retreating Eldian civilians. In the aftermath of the war, the Fritz King had a plan. The Eldians should all flee to the island of Paradise as the titan onslaught grew. Using the founding titan, he constructed three vast walls using literal titan bodies to forever keep out any outsiders. The Eldians, in the end, turned Madagascar into a hermit kingdom. The Asian minority of the island were seen as outsiders and were exterminated inside the walls, which is why Mikasa is the only one. The king used the power of the founding titan to manipulate the memories of every citizen on the island so that they would believe that their society was now the last bastion in a post-apocalyptic world. The royal family retreated to the shadows while a puppet regime took their place, creating a society on standstill for the last century. Eldians still survive on the mainland of Africa, however the tables have turned. They now live in isolated ghettos, used by the Marley Empire only for their titan abilities, if need be. And this is how it was for a century. The Fritz King threatened that if they were ever attacked, the founding titan would end the world. And so nobody bothered the Eldians on their island of Madagascar for over a century. Until, well, you know. The thing I find fascinating about this lore is that, yes, while it can be about killing giant monsters and fighting, there is so much of it still left unexplored. If this is Earth, then when does it take place? Is it in some alternate steampunk past, or is this the far future and the Titans are some apocalyptic disaster that destroyed a past civilization? Have Titans always existed and this is some alternate timeline? Where are the lemurs if this is Madagascar? It's a world where because humans can be weapons, humans are treated as weapons. And honestly, that to me is more fascinating than just character development. What do you think? This is Cody of Alternate History Hub. This video was sponsored by Verve. Verve is an app which allows you access to content from multiple different channels such as Mondo, Rooster Teeth, CISO, and even anime providers like Funimation and Crunchyroll. All of these and more in one convenient app. Download it on your phone, iOS or Android, and even console devices like Xbox and PlayStation. There are absolutely no ads and everything is in HD. So, no worries on that front. Verve is actually having an offer that allows you a 7-day free trial using this link. With that, you have free access to absolutely everything. 
So there's a few things I think you should check out. One, I would recommend diving deeper into Attack on Titan if you find this video interesting. Not only that, but Harmon Quest as well where Dan Harmon, creator of Rick and Morty and Community, plays Dungeons and Dragons with his friends and guest stars, and it's probably one of my favorite things to come out in a while. Anyway, click on the link in the description to begin your free trial to the Verve app. This is Cody of Altering History Hub.